Oh, hi. This week we are doing something long, 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 long overdue. And we are replacing the zipper in my raincoat, which I have owned for probably 18 years or something, like since I was a teenager of yore, and it's been broken the entire time because it was a hand-me-down from someone, and uh, I, I suspect the broken teeth and the zipper is why I received it in the first place. I uh, actually only am just now realizing that there's a snap that you can detach the bottom of the pocket from. Very cool. Also, there are holes in the pockets. Those could use some fixin'. Nothing extreme, but you know, I'm already good at losing stuff when there aren't booby traps involved. So uh, let's not set ourselves up for failure, shall we? And yes, those have also been there as long as the broken zipper teeth. It's funny, I have definitely done this type of sewing job for several other people before. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's not so scary, I promise, especially when it's separating zippers. I know that has felt daunting to me in the past, so if you are also like, Ugh, I got you. We can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh, I also forgot about these sick armpit vents, because listen, it is forever humid in New England. You need raincoat for rain protection, but also sticky and hot, so armpit vent very good. So one of the ones I have done for someone else was a hoodie. I, I think that's one of my most viewed videos, which every time someone comments on it, I did that so many years ago. I don't, I don't remember everything. I've posted so many over the years, like well over 500 that I, I'm surprised every time like, oh, I did do that, didn't I? <laughs> I'm finally doing one for me and not for somebody else because I deserve things to work properly. Where listen, the zipper zips up if you go really fast and just don't, don't hesitate. Can't think about it, you just gotta go for it. 90% of the time. But if you slow down at all, it will catch and then you're basically trapped in there forever. So there's the three teeth, three or four? Four? Three. There's a number of teeth missing in the middle here and then one that's just broken on the other side. So obviously this is a plastic zipper, specifically a plastic separating zipper. That hoodie video I did, I used, I don't even like touching this. I don't like using metal zippers for many reasons, but the tactile and audio experience does not bring me joy. And this is what I mean by a separating zipper, is it comes apart in two halves. Okay, hi, I'm back home. I went on a little, oh, <laughs> this is the little tube from the inside of the roll of Bert's dog bags that I put in his little keychain bag from this video here. It's still one of my favorite things that I've made. I use it every single day, multiple times a day. But when I took him out this morning, I used the last bag while we were out for our walk and then forgot to replace it. Normally I take the tube like out of the bag and I'll either like try to tuck it behind my ear, just like hold it in my hand or something so that I don't forget to replace the roll once I get home. But I forgot, so then I took him out for a walk. I mean, sometimes it takes a minute for me to remember that I have to do it, but like I, I tried to trick myself into remembering to restock it and we just went for a little bit of a walk. Thankfully, we didn't get too far from the house when this happened. I took this out of his little bag and put it on my necklace. By the way, I put one of my favorite necklaces on. It's just a simple little guy, but it's a thimble and needle and a little bit of thread. If you add a beer mug, it's basically my logo. <laughs> but yeah, I threaded this onto it so that I wouldn't forget. I did replace it already, but I forgot to take that off till I saw it in the reflection of the camera. Not the reflection, but the screen. You know what I'm talking about. <gasps> and speak of the boy, are you gonna make an appearance? Yeah? Everyone's favorite stink bean. He's gonna be 15 in two weeks. Can't believe it. His paws are a little bit whiter and his snoot, like his cheeks are a little bit whiter, but like his black fur, there's maybe one or two new white hairs, but that's it. I, I don't understand. You're spry as ever, huh? Yeah, just sleepier. Thank you for not actually giving me stinky kisses. You gonna hang out in here? You gonna go on the couch? Here's the thing, normally he would hang out under my desk. I have two beds for him in here, but when he discovered like, oh, I can just sit on the couch all day in a pile of blankets. 
I do like this more. So I doubt he'll actually stay and hang out, but we'll give it a try. But anyway, I was talking about zippers before I got so delightfully interrupted earlier. You can definitely use a metal zipper for this, but I don't want to because I don't like them. And they're scratchy when you touch them. Like if you, if you get them caught on stuff, it just, it's not the kind of life I want to lead. I like how they look, but I just rather not. So most zippers that I interact with in this world of ours is uh, coil zippers, nylon coil zippers that, you know, you zip them on down, but there is this built-in stop down here. This stays attached at the bottom. You're just splitting things to a certain point and then they're coming back together. But thankfully I just happen to have one that is a separating zipper with plastic teeth that is the exact right length that I need. I'm sure there's just like sport jacket length or something like that, but these were gifted from my fairy god Cheryl and I am excited about it because it's exactly what I need and an equally obnoxious color as the raincoat. So it's gonna work out well. And yeah, this much less annoying sound. Look at that. And now we have two separate pieces. Wouldn't you know it, it separated as the name implies. And then you have this bit here. You just push that over, make sure these are even, and you push it back up. Oh, and Bert has decided he is done with us. Well, thanks for visiting. I'm going to go tuck him in. I will be right back. Oh, good. I also remembered to grab my water, which I put my new sticker on here. I don't know if I shared that I updated the logo just a little bit. Just some little tweaks, still the same thing at heart. We have our coat. We have the zipper we need to replace. Now let's talk tools. I'm gonna need my seam ripper, which isn't actually up here, which concerns me. Where would I put a seam ripper? Probably in my like portable sewing bag. Is this a seam ripper? Oh, it is a seam ripper. How cool is this thing? It's a seam ripper that side and I think a little, oh, seam ripper both sides. I take it back. This is like a hand turned resin masterpiece. Gonna need to seam rip some stuff. Here's the thing. This is my favorite tool when it is part of a disassembly process because my roots in sewing are with thrifting and upcycling stuff. So taking stuff apart and like getting it to its bones is one of my favorite parts. It's very meditative. This is also kind of my worst enemy because when I have to take it out, if I've made a mistake on something and have to undo it and redo it, I'm never in a good mood when I have to take this out. So it uh, gets the best and worst of me. <laughs> We'll need scissors for like snipping threads, but I don't think we're actually cutting anything down because the zipper is the right length and we're not removing any of the pieces permanently. We're just detaching and then reattaching, except for the old zipper itself. And then we'll need matching thread in our sewing machine. I think that's it. Pins will probably come in handy. Maybe some chalk to mark stuff out, but yeah, oh, I'm excited. I guess I could have done a good old fashioned, here's what you need. So yeah, we're just gonna pick stuff apart until we get the, I keep wanting to say scissor pieces, zipper pieces out of the coat. And some of these other overlapping pieces might have to get all the way d detached, but we're gonna reinsert it. And then some just gonna be an opening that we're gonna have to reclose after. It will be like maybe a little finicky and tedious because there's some more parts than maybe you were expecting when you embarked on this, or maybe this is why you were nervous about it in the first place. I'm recording this, so I have footage of what it looked like beforehand, so that's something. But if you're nervous, just take a picture and you'll have that as a reference. This is what I do, or at least this is what I try to do when I take most things apart. It's like, take a photo first, noodle around with it. Like if I'm checking out stuff with my sewing machine, I will take a picture if it's something I haven't messed with before, just to make sure things are getting reset to square one at the end of it all. Hopefully you're watching basically a time-lapse of me working on this while current me is chilling out, listening to a podcast or catching up on some YouTube videos while I sit and unpick things and just try to relax a little bit. Keeping my hands busy helps the okay feeling be a little bit more present in my life. Okay, especially on these end bits where there's a lot of back tacking, it's gonna seem impossible to unpick it all and you're gonna get frustrated and impatient, or at least I am talking to myself here, it is gonna be worth it to just stick it out because the second I started digging into any of the fabric around it, I immediately regretted doing it. So just take it slow. This isn't a rush. It also isn't a game, which is the word I was going to say. And it's gonna make a mess, but just, you know, pick out the threads as you go along or wait till after and you'll get it done eventually. Also this like mouth flap bit at the top started to detach because again, there's there's a lot of layers involved with a coat like this and stuff is inserted into other places and I can absolutely understand why this seems intimidating. I have been intimidated by this kind of thing before 
that's going to start to come out because of the way all the stuff is stitched together. So I just took some of my craft clips and reattached it at those points so there's no guesswork as far as like where it went, what the height was, any of that. Also, I did notice that at the bottom of the zipper, the pieces it was sewn to had a little notch in it to mark the bottom of the zip and where it was going. And that was also very helpful. So like when I go to insert the new one, I will know where the bottom of the zipper should fall. So just a little helpful thing. Oh, and the top of the zipper, once I unpicked the layers around it, I saw that it was kind of like folded back out of the way so that the actual top of the zipper tape, so like this up here wasn't sticking out or visible. It was folded back out of the way like this, just to give a little neater of a finish. And also the dog upstairs was barking. So I think that means there was a delivery, which I am anticipating getting today. So hopefully that is actually what just got dropped off. Let me go check and I will either be very excited or just be even grumpier. We'll see. Okay, I am pleased. <gasps> Y'all there's, okay, okay, I'm gonna, we can dig through this together. All right, I think these are all fat quarters. Oh, these are so fun. And then a nice big pile of paint markers. I don't know if anyone noticed, but oh my God, mirroring things is so hard. I was actually gifted. I had a couple already, but almost everything else up here is Posca pens that were gifted from her. And I had a little setup and I've already used them a bunch. I never thought I'd be at a place in my life where I could own a bunch of Posca pens. And I know there's still more colors to add to the collection and I'm excited about it, but like paint markers are such a game changer and I've always like envied people that had them. My mom worked at a craft store for a really long time when I was growing up and we've always been like crafty people. So it's just been this like pillar of excellence. Now I get to own some of that stuff. There's some other like very interesting looking things in here that I'm pumped to play around with. Thank you so much. This is box one of three, so hold tight. And that was the smallest box of the ones that I have received. <gasps> what is this? Dude. So I have these plans of doing little quilted rows of color blocking, like having strips that are like pieces of color quilted together as the color block panel. This is amazing. This is amazing. Also, if that ain't my color, I don't know what is. What do we call that? Mermaid tail. Beautiful. This bitch loves a good rainbow. Oh, hold on. There's a box within a box. I cannot express to you how well-timed all of this is because I've made so many bags. I made like 40 tote bags last week and that's not an exaggeration. So not only have I cleared out a lot of space of stuff, but now I'm thinking of particular kinds of bags I want to make and all of these, they're like smaller patterns and stuff and they're gonna work a lot better for the kinds of things that I wanna make. Okay, I'm going to sort through that even more later and like organize everything because I have certain areas I wanna put certain things, but that was all very satisfying to go through. So thank you again. Oh man, the potential in these boxes. I have so many ideas, so many ideas. As someone who just like can't stop making bags, this is invaluable. Okay, back to you zipper detachment. I have a little bit more to go. Honestly, I think unpicking is going to be the most time consuming part. So just if you're like, well, if it's this much effort getting the old zipper out, what's it going to be like getting the new one in? If you take your time and leave your fears at the door, we can get through this together just fine. Let's do it. We're almost there. Hell yeah. Get wrecked, nerd. Look at that. Both sides, unpicked. I got my little clippies for my for my mouth flap, whatever. I don't know what the term for this thing is, but you 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 know, you know the the, the this thing. Are we ready for the installation process? It's gonna be fine. Helpful if I hit the record button. Here's the bottom of our coat, one side of it. Flip it over, and here's our little notch, right, where we're gonna line up the bottom of the zipper tape. They're just gonna make sure that the tab is at the top and also facing out. It's gonna line up with that little notch, making sure it's facing the right way. You can flip it under so it's right sides together with this notch here. And if you feel comfortable, you can top stitch along here all the way up. But if you're nervous about it and keeping everything even, which absolutely fine, I got you. All you're gonna do is cause you unpicked all of this is fold this flap out. And again, making sure we're going the right way. So 
this edge is right sides together with the very edge of this that's folded under. So then when we do this front side facing out and line it up with both of these edges at the same point all the way up and just sew it so that none of these stitches are gonna be visible from the outside. Cause obviously if you're doing the top stitching from here, you're gonna see those stitches. So if you wanna like do a practice row, this is a good way to do it and kind of see where you're at with everything. And we're gonna toss a couple pins into place along the way. And then yeah, you're just gonna do that up this whole edge until you get to the top. You move the zipper head out of the way as you're going. And I am gonna start from the bottom cause that's where we have the known notch point. And then once we're to the top, remember how this, oops, bye pin cushion. <laughs> remember how this was folded out of the way. Obviously we'll do it once we're there, but just don't stress if this is going above the end point here, cause we're gonna, we're gonna tuck that baby out of sight. No one's gonna see her. And then yes, there's this other layer over here. That's like the lining piece. Don't worry about that yet. Keep that out of the way. Don't stress about it. We will deal with that after we get this part done. So let's do just a straight stitch. And just for transparency here, like I'm not even doing that good of a job keeping this even lined up over here. Like I'm using my zipper foot. I'm trying to pay attention, but it's not coming out perfect and it's still gonna be okay. So don't ever have me on a pedestal for sewing stuff. Cause sometimes I get comments on here where people are like, I could never do what you do. It's like you absolutely can, I promise. It just takes practice and just being extremely stubborn with yourself and being like, I'm gonna make this work. Come hell or high water. <laughs> we go see oh except it's not at all in, in frame there we go not too bad right also hi the reason I'm starting from the bottom and not starting from the top is because the bottom has the separating bit and you can't move that but the top you can shorten it if you need to or you can find a way to finagle it a little bit easier but the bottom is like non-adjustable Ooh, I don't know why turning my head like that just made me lightheaded. Uh, so I'm gonna grab some water and a salty snack. All right, snack has been eaten. Water has been drank. A little bit more water. Let's knock this out. The zipper separates so we can take this other side off. All right, get that out of here. I mean, keep it close cause we'll need it because this has been stitched on, right? I was about to top stitch here and you can do this one step at a time and absolutely top stitch and then move on to the next part. But I think I'll be okay doing both of these at the same time. She said, not confidently, what is the best course of action here? The thought I just had is that we have a visible line of stitching here. So if I'm sewing from this side to attach the lining, I'll know that I'm catching the front side if this is kind of right in line with the stitch marks. See what I'm saying? Like if this is just over that, I think I have to stitch from this side. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. I gotta, I gotta trust my skills. And if it doesn't work out, I can unpick it. That's the worst case scenario is that I have to unpick this again. It actually just reminded me of when I was a kid and I was helping my dad put these like cabinet liners down that our dishes and stuff went on top of and it, it was like wallpaper but for your shelves and it didn't look super great because it wasn't quite the right size and maybe not quite the right color that we wanted but every time we got another section done we looked at it and we're like it's better than it was and I do often think about that we're like this old zipper had broken teeth in it and didn't zip properly if this is like a little bit wonky it's still gonna be better than it was. I'm gonna continue channeling that energy for today. Also, this video is going up on, yeah, what would have been his 71st birthday. And I had talked about maybe doing a flannel project, but I think working on some rain gear is also pretty apropos of today's date. If you also wanna celebrate it with me, uh, please go outside and just like, find a flower that you like or tell me about your favorite flower if things aren't in bloom right now or if you have a favorite tree if there is a type of flora that you enjoy most tell me about it because purple lilacs are my very very favorite flower but i also have a lot of love for forsythia bushes and japanese red maples those are my like special plants so uh yeah if you have some that like mean a lot to you 
let me know because I'm curious and like I'm sure it's regional there's definitely going to be stuff that doesn't grow around here that y'all might love oh am I procrastinating once again let's sew some things we'll go this side and I'm just going to switch this over that's why I like this specific zipper foot because you can go either side oh that was no nope, just kidding <laughs> I promise this isn't my first time sewing something. I really hope that for those people that have said they're intimidated by some of the stuff that I've made, this is this is really giving you a glimpse as to what it's actually like working on projects. Like things go awry and it's all fine. And just as you're going, there's a lot of layers. So just keep tucking them out of the way. Keep an eye on it. Keep a thingy on it. Just take your time. It'll be all right. I'm also making sure not to like stretch anything super hard. So that should keep everything from being super wonky. <gasps> Ooh, I am so glad I paused to ramble a little bit there because I just realized the bobbin is almost out of thread. This would be a particularly annoying, because it's such a long stretch I'm about to do. This would have been a particularly annoying thing to run out of bobbin thread for. So cool. I'm going to switch that real quick. <laughs> and I can also check my, yeah, that's looking fine on the front. We'll kind of check our work a bit. Perfect. Into it. Very excited. And we continue. Ooh, okay. So another thing that I, you know, should have done before we did this. We're not going with should. I wish I had checked this before, but also not the end of the world. I was about to get to the part with the, the little flap at the top. I think I will be thankful to myself if I just stitch this down real quick. So then when I flip stuff over, there's not these extra layers to worry about. It's all going to be attached. So then we can flip it under. It's just going to look neater. And also thankful to pass me for clipping these into place or else I wouldn't have realized this before it was too late. And I would have had to deconstruct a bunch of stuff to fit it in there. So sometimes I do in fact think ahead. And I promise I'm not trying to be hard on myself with all of these exposures, but just to show you the reality of what sewing stuff can be like sometimes. Like this is a pain in the butt. Difficult isn't quite the word. There's just a lot of moving parts and you gotta keep an eye on what you're doing. So nothing to be afraid of. Look at these little black sheep scissors. Aren't they the cutest? And also it me. I try to be a clean as you go kind of person, but it's, it's hard when you just want to move on to the next thing. All right. Now we can get back to where we were. Every jacket's probably going to be a little different. This part wants to fold under like, like this. That looks nice and clean. So I'll pin right there. And then this wants to fold under. And then I'll just line these two edges up as best I can. I think there's going to be a little bit of a pucker on the black over here, but that's also on the inside of the coat. Just be super careful to not hit any of the plastic teeth. Like I folded the top of the zipper tape in here, but the actual top plastic bit is like right here. And that's going to stay out of the way of the needle. Just be wary because that's how things break and scare the crap out of you. It's pretty bulky right here. If you're nervous, something you can do is just turn your hand crank. So that way, if your needle's getting caught on something, it won't have the pressure of the machine doing it and you're less likely to break a needle that way. All right. Now, making sure this top tooth here is out of the way. I'm gonna like backstitch across the top. You can flip it around and go forward, but this is just gonna be quicker for my positioning. All right, let's take a peek. The top actually looks neater than I kind of thought it was gonna be. And then this is covering it all anyway. Well, that's one side done. You know what? It actually just occurred to me that I have a bunch of zippers the same size and brand, and I could swap out different pieces and get an even more festive situation out of it. Maybe for another coat. That would be a lot of fun. Like that Crayola box earlier, I really wanna make just like a primary color block something with just like basic, basic colors. And that would be a really fun way to do the zipper in the front. But then I'd wanna make a pair of those so that both halves of both zippers got used. 
everything's working beautifully. It looks like, yeah, everything's gonna line up okay. And you know what? Something worth mentioning. I keep referring to some notches down the bottom of the coat. It's very likely that your coat won't have notches. That's just from like the people that made it at LL Bean. Not sponsored. I just like, I live in New England. Of course, I ended up with an LL Bean jacket. Before you take out your first original zipper, you can make a mark at the bottom with chalk, with a pin, by cutting a little notch like that so that you know where the bottom is supposed to go. Cause again, the bottom is like immovable. You can't really tweak it once it's installed, but the top you can futz around with more. We're starting from the bottom, now we're here. Anyway, since I have those notches to go off of, I'm going to unzip the halves again, just cause it, it's less to move around. Make sure this side is going right sides together here against that yellow, we're doing it the exact same way. We'll flip it over just to double check. That is in fact the matching side. We'll pin that at the bottom. And then yeah, this should line up at the top like the other one did, looking good. And this one's gonna be even easier because we don't have that flap involved. So it's gonna be one less like hurdle along the way. And you just watched me do all this with the other side, so I'm not gonna make you watch this bit. Like I said, this is gonna be even easier because there's, there's one less piece to deal with. All right. Let's knock this out and then we'll take her for a test spin. And now for the moment of truth. There we go. All right, we did it. I am so pleased. Again, I've been putting this off almost half my life, so it was due. This, this took me more of today than it probably should have, but I, I also had some other stuff going on. Life is lifing. As always, thank you so, so, so very much to everyone over on Patreon. It is because y'all, I get to take days like today to fix my motherfucking coat that I've been meaning to do for a decade and a half. So thank you all for being here, for letting me take the time to do this. It's like helping me have the resources to do things like this. And one of my part-time out of the house jobs is basically going away. So I have this security net to help me get through and like forge ahead. So uh, thank you for the support here on Patreon, hanging out in the Discord. If you've ever bought me a coffee, if you've come to see me at a market, asked for a custom order for something like a bag, bought something off my Etsy shop, I will be doing an update soon. And, and we get to have this like, camaraderie and like I hope you learned something but also if you have better ways to install stuff like this please share both for my benefit and for everybody else here it's the best community I appreciate all us bog trolls having this little corner of the internet to hang out in oh <sighs> I got winded walking outside and then coming back in so I think I'm gonna go oh I thought the battery like died died I have okay okay I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Did we make it? Is it still going? Boy, I hope so. <laughs> Four. Three. Four. Four. Anything I can do, you can do better. <laughs> this is not for fashion. It is for when I feel like Nobody can find Chanticleer.